Greetings and salutations, I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood. Thanks for joining me for another Tip Tuesday. Last week we took a look at part one of our portrait retouching series using Adobe Lightroom. I showed you how to make tonal corrections and initial adjustments to your images. Today we begin part two where I'll show you how to use the adjustment tools including the spot removal tool and the adjustment brush. Let's go ahead and jump in. You can see on the screen in front of you I have the same portrait of Mr. John Hayes I used last week and one of the first things I'm going to do is zoom in four to one so that we can get a closer look at his face and I'm going to turn on the spot removal tool which is located on the right. Now I want you to see as I turn this tool on I'm going to hover over some initial corrections I've made to the image. So I just want you to see that as I click on these they activate showing you where some changes have already been done. I'm going to go ahead and select one and if you want to delete an actual change you can simply press the delete key and you can see that it goes away. So if you're going to use the spot removal tool inside of Lightroom I want you to understand that it's really not the same as the healing brush or the clone stamp inside of Photoshop. And what I mean by that is in Photoshop you can actually paint in really heavy with your adjustments. <clears throat> if you have an image that has a moderate amount of adjustments to make the spot removal tool will be fine. But if you find that you want to make some sweeping changes to the image you'll probably be better off in Photoshop. Let's take a look here and if I want to remove this spot inside of Lightroom I simply press and hold the mouse over the spot I want to replace and then I drag it to an area that I think is clean. So I'm going to take a second here and just drag that scar that was on his nose up to his forehead. I'll let go of the mouse and you can see that spot has been fixed. I'll go ahead and turn off the spot removal tool. I'm going to zoom out and now I'll turn on the adjustment brush. With the adjustment brush, if you want to make a change to an image, you simply click anywhere in the image to start and it's going to set a spot for your adjustment and then you can paint. Now you'll notice as I paint you really can't see anything. So if you want to be able to see the areas that you're painting, you can simply press O for overlay. So I'll turn the overlay on and now I can see the areas that I'm actually painting and they're covered in uh, pink color. So I just want to kind of paint the sky here real fast. Hey, notice that I'm not really being all too careful. I'm kind of actually running over John's face a little bit and over his shoulder. Hey, and what I'll do now is press O and turn the overlay off. And I just want you to see that I am actually making changes to this image. So if I want, I can slide the faders now over on the right hand side. I can adjust the exposure up or down. I can change the contrast up or down. And if I wanted to, I could desaturate the background. So that's how you make an initial adjustment. If you want to delete it, you simply hit the delete key and poof, it's gone. So I'm going to take a second and zoom in, once again, four to one. And we're going to focus on the eyes and the nose for this initial adjustment. I want you to see as you look at the screen that I already have an adjustment placed on the eyes. Uh, I can tell that because there's a gray dot that I set before we began. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this and when I click on that gray dot it activates and it becomes black to let me know it's an active adjustment. So I want you to see I've already painted in the left eye. Press O for overlay you can see that but I have not painted in the right eye. So I'm going to go ahead and resize my brush. Now I'll go over to the right you can see this is where the sizing fader is so I'll bring that down a little smaller and I'll go ahead and paint in the eye and that'll brighten that up just a little bit and once you've painted in the adjustment you can actually change it by adjusting any of the sliders so we have our exposure brightness contrast our saturation our clarity our sharpness and even color right so I can slide any one of these or all of them on an adjustment that I've set with that black dot so if I wanted, I could tweak the brightness, make the eyes darker. Hey, I could go ahead and brighten them up. Hey, not too bright because they'll whiten out. So I'm just going to make these uh, actually quite a bit brighter than they really were just for the purpose of the video so you can see that. So I'll brighten these up. Hey, change the color. 
and that looks pretty good for the eyes. Now, your adjustment will probably be a little bit less. Again, I'm doing this for the sake of the video. But let's take a look at John's nose, right? So you can see John's nose is just a little bit red. Okay? It's got a little bit of red in his nose. And what I'm going to do is create a new adjustment. Now, if I paint right now, it's the existing dot that's over here on his eye. So what I'm going to do is go to the right-hand panel. And I actually have a setting for a new adjustment. So I'll click that. And now I can set a new spot. Now I want to adjust my brush a little bit larger. And you'll notice I have a setting here called Auto Mask. And I'll go ahead and I'll just click on John's nose and start to paint. Now I want to be able to see where I can paint. So I'm using O for overlay. And you can see I'm just going to paint real fast. Hey, maybe over here a little bit. And I got a little bit in his eye, so I'll hold the Alt key. Just kind of paint that out, and I'll adjust this brush here. That's a little bit too small. Right. So I'm going to paint that out, fix that a little bit, and let me just kind of paint that back in. So I'll turn the overlay off by pressing O, and what I want to do is fix the color. So what I'm going to do is actually take the saturation down, not too far because I don't want his nose to be gray, right. but I'm going to take the saturation down, and then I'm actually going to set a color. Right. Now, I want to uh, uh, point out that uh, it was brought to my attention that you can actually sample color from an image. Uh, I had overlooked this, so thanks to Dan and Mark. Um, if you take your cursor and you press and hold and drag into the image okay, while keeping the mouse held down, you can see I'm actually sampling colors from the image. Now, as I sample colors from the image, I want you to notice that I wouldn't use these in this particular case because if you look at John's nose, it's actually turning more pink, right? So his skin color uh, is a little red, and so as I sample from his face, that's not really going to help us out. So I'm actually going to pick a color from the uh, ramp, the color ramp that's here. Right? I want to go with a color that has a little bit more of a yellow hue to it. Right? So I'm going to go with a little bit more yellow hue. And that, plus the saturation being brought down a little bit, I want you to see, uh, I'll go ahead and take a second, turn off my adjustments. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to drop the panels and bring up before and after. And I want you to see, this is our finished before and after. So here is the image on the left that we had from last week where we started. Um, and you can see the image on the right is very much improved. It includes all of the tonal changes made from last week and part one of our series, as well as the adjustments made today using our adjustment tools and spot removal tools. If you want to know how to do sharpening inside a Lightroom, I encourage you to watch my sharpening video on the improvements made to Lightroom 3 and process version 2010. Or if you want to see last week's video, please check out part one of our portrait retouching series. So I'm AJ Wood. As always, I appreciate you being here each week. Please be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, and I'll see you again next week. Thanks a lot.